Hi everyone, this is Asher, and welcome to another session of Homebrew Healing. So today, let's talk about trauma. So, first and foremost, what is considered trauma? Uh, trauma is the reaction someone experiences to an event, um, experience, or series of experiences that uh, cause shock, uh, a sense of helplessness, hopelessness, um, or are, are considered uh, very emotionally, physically, or spiritually debilitating and draining in uh, in the moment, uh, so much so that the the most common immediate reaction does tend to be a shock reaction. Uh, but what sort of separates what would be considered a traumatic event from, uh, let's see, an undesirable or unpleasant one is uh, most notably the, the impact, especially long term. So an unpleasant or undesired uh, situation that isn't traumatic is something that might bother you for a couple of hours or maybe maybe even a day or so on and off. Um, especially if you're someone who tends to ruminate. However, a traumatic event or situation will continue to have kind of long-standing impacts. Um, sometimes things like nightmares uh, or increased reactivity, specifically like nervous system reactivity, um, so that that kind of fight or flight response uh, when your adrenaline gets going, um, especially in response to what's called a trigger. So this would be um, some kind of um, thing or word or statement or scenario or situation, something that would remind you of that traumatizing event um, and would kind of bring you back to that same emotional, mental, or physical or spiritual state that you sort of were in during the event. Um, so these triggers... Uh, can kind of incite flashbacks uh, to the event uh, itself or series of events uh, because you know there are different kinds of trauma as well but the idea here is um, as far as differentiating between trauma and something that's just unpleasant is the the impact it has on the individual especially long term um, now, as far as how to address trauma, there are a variety of responses, um, especially considering the kind of trauma that we're, we're talking about. But uh, I, I found this kind of in, in both my personal experience, and it's been uh, largely reaffirmed by the, uh, the mental health professionals I've, I've spoken to as well, that because trauma tends to be such a physical experience for people, um, similar with things like you know PTSD or panic disorder, um, you know these these tend to be very like panic attack reactions, you know very physical reactions when you're either experiencing a trigger or a flashback or a nightmare. Um, talk therapy can be really, really helpful, but I found for myself it would it really only got me so far. Um, I ran into a similar roadblock with mindfulness and meditation. I found that if my body was kind of actively in that that fight or flight mode, and you know we were going to panic attack town, switching gears, um, that trying to do breathing exercises and mindfulness techniques almost seem to actually draw out the, um, the anxiety or panic attack longer. And my therapist sort of explained to me why that, that would have been. Um, and they likened it to um, predator and prey animals in the wild. They're 
were telling me about this this conference that they attended, where a video was shown of I believe a gazelle being pursued by a cheetah or something, um, and the prey animal managed to escape, uh, and immediately after doing so, it, it laid down to rest for a period of time after you know uh, exerting itself running so so fast and for uh, however long it had to at full speed to escape. Uh, then, after laying down for a period of half an hour or so, it proceeded to get up and shake its entire body all over um, for you know, 40 seconds or a couple minutes or so. So, the reason my therapist sort of explained to me that this is really, really helpful for your nervous system is, I, I guess, kind of similar to... Um, EMDR treatment, which is eye movement desensitization repetition, um, whereas you're, you know, discussing a really traumatic event with a trained therapist, um, you're following only with your eyes uh, certain objects. What these acts do are they kind of trick our nervous system into believing that the fight or flight response has kind of been fulfilled uh, and you know that we no longer need to be in that reactive state anymore. Uh, I think EMDR might actually have a slightly different impact. I think it kind of assists in um, connecting. It, it is still tricking your nervous system, but I think it actually winds up connecting a different emotional attachment to that situation, that traumatic event, than what you initially experienced. Because I, I believe that the the motion of um, following this, this dot or whatever with your eyes actually winds up kind of calming your nervous system so that you are inherently in a less reactive state while being exposed to uh, the trigger or you know, discussion of the traumatic event. Um, so it, it kind of helps remove some of the power that that event might have on you, but um, also reframe it for you a little bit. Uh, whereas the shaking, which my therapist actually recommended to me, um, or other move, physical movements that are not for the purpose of exercise, is how they described it. Uh, movements that assist in feeling as though energy is being expelled, as opposed to movements that were intended for the purpose of uh, fitness. So the reason they were telling me about this video is because this is a really natural response that um, you'll encounter in a variety of different species, including humans. You know, I'm sure I'm not the only one who, uh, when very excited or escalated or agitated or um, sad sometimes, will almost shake or feel as though I'm shaking. Um, you know, so the idea is that these movements kind of are speaking the same language that your, your body is. And why that's important for trauma is because trauma tends to live in the body. It tends to be very much a, a physical experience for a lot of people as much as it is emotional. Um, because that trauma can cause, you know, a more hyperactive or a more reactive nervous system, which means that, you know, you might be someone who's more likely to more often become um, in, in that heightened uh, anxious or traumatic state. So what can we do about that? Well, like I've, I've been talking about things like shaking or EMDR or just other other movements that feel good to you in the sense of, you know, releasing some tension or energy. Um, for me, that does very much happen to be shaking. Um, shaking also happens to be a stim for me. If you don't know what a stim is, this is something that both autistic and non-autistic people do. Alistic, I believe, is the correct term. Um, and it is some kind of sort of voluntary, sort of involuntary um, sound or physical movement or action 
um, that really does just kind of release a lot of that excess restlessness or energy. Uh, a really common one is the, the bouncy leg. Lots of people do the bouncy shaky leg. Um, I'm more of a shaky shoulder, shaky torso, kind of stimmer myself. Um, so shaking, it speaks the same language as your body. It speaks the same language as your trauma. And from based on some articles that I was reading online, it also appears to potentially offer a lot of other benefits. Um, okay, folks, so according to the Mayo Clinic, what are the benefits of shaking? As little as 15 minutes a day of whole body shaking or vibration three times a week may aid in weight loss, burn fat, improve flexibility, enhance blood flow, reduce muscle soreness after exercise, build strength, and decrease the stress hormone cortisol. You know, and there are a variety of, of other articles I'm, I'm seeing online that are advocating for the benefits of, of shaking um, for your body in general outside of trauma. Um, it is also one of the most popular or common movements that was suggested by my therapist. So having said that, and given a little bit of a background on what trauma is, um, you know, let's do some shaking. Um, specifically, my therapist, just for context, did recommend doing this um, as kind of a preventative measure to sort of reduce some of that energy and tension built up on a daily basis. Um, you'll find if you have any loved ones in your life or are yourself uh, autistic or have ADHD, um, you may notice that a lot of us tend to stim when we're upset or in a, an overwhelming situation. Um, so and this is this is really really common in a lot of the um, the autistic folks that I, I've met in particular as well as myself. Um, and it's it's an effort to kind of self-regulate, uh, you know, especially if you're experiencing a, a situation involving emotional duress. Uh, however, it can also be used as a preventative measure, you know, so that when you do experience those moments of duress, they may be a little bit less overwhelming than they would have been otherwise. Having said that, I tend to kind of do it for both. Uh, so I've done enough talking. Got some lovely music in the background. So let's just try and do like, I don't know, 30 seconds, a minute of shaking. Well, I don't know about you, but I certainly feel a lot better, um, especially because that's a stim of mine. I can do that for ages, uh, but even if it wasn't, I do recognize, you know, the great release of tension, um, and if, if it isn't shaking for you, you know, um, there's all kinds of different movements you can try. There's squeezing, there's, you know, just kind of tensing and releasing your muscles. You know, there's uh, there's vibrating or rocking. You know, it's really just whatever feels good to your body in that moment. You know, especially uh, with respect to and in context of kind of, you know, releasing some of that that physical tension or tension that maybe manifested as physical, but, you know, is, is actually emotional. Uh, so, thank you for joining me again today, folks, for another episode of Hope Brew Healing. And uh, I'm looking forward to
to chat again next week. Ciao for now.